And so, John, here we are. This must be a special place to you. Uh, it certainly feels like a special place to me. Um, as the third generation leader of this great company, um, tell me a little bit about the history. Tell me about your grandfather, how he got started. Give yeah, I mean, insight. it's a, his great story, Karsten Solheim. Um, he actually started pretty late in life. I think he was in his 50s when he just started playing golf, and then he quickly realized he could make better golf equipment. But to go back before that, he did a lot of stuff early in his career that kind of helped prepare him. Um, he was a door-to-door -door -door cook, cookware salesman, which helped him like with golf club sales later, later in life. Uh, he started off as a shoemaker, which helped him with grinding golf clubs because he would grind the heels of mm -hmm. shoes. Um, and then he ended up being an engineer through World War II. They were recruiting engineers. Um, he had a very mechanical mind. Uh, so he worked on anything from TV sets to the landing gear um, on aircraft carriers. So after all that, he had a he had all engineering jobs, and then so his engineering mind kicked in when he started playing golf, thought, thinking about perimeter weighting. Mm -hmm. um, so it all started there. I remember this room a lot when I was a kid. There's stairs right out there, and the race was you know how who could get up the stairs the quickest and who could jump down the most on the last step. So. A lot of good memories of this area. You could obviously see a lot of uh, stuff that Karsten had and his day-to-day -day work is still here in place. Yeah, yeah. There's, there really are so No computer. Many I don't think he ever had a computer. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> you know, I, I see a, a bowl on the table there with those ping golf balls. I'm sure yep. many of you remember those, the, the two-tone golf balls and a couple of beryllium pings in the corner there. Yeah. Really, uh, so many memories for me just as a, as a regular golfer growing up. And, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they said, if in the in the 70s and 80s 80s in particular if you played golf and you didn't play ping there was something wrong with you yeah you know? um really amazing that's equipment. still the case that is but <laughs> we would like that to be more there's, the case there's a lot of stuff wrong in the world today right <laughs> <laughs> that's true but really just a special place and one that that i must say i can sense the history and um You've certainly done a brilliant job uh, in continuing his legacy and that family heritage of attention to detail and really making it all about performance. Mm -hmm. um, so different to what so many companies are doing nowadays and uh, it, it's, it's awesome to see put performance first and that'll make the selling part easier. Yeah, that's, um, that's the way we feel. Our best selling feature is just demoing the product, getting fit for the product. Um, and we really do look at how does it perform. It's great if it looks good. But mm -hmm. what we care about is does it make the drivers go longer, does it make it go straighter, do the irons hit the greens more often. Mm -hmm. What else needs to be said? Thanks for watching. <laughs>